Hello there and welcome to my review of the MH751 gaming headset. Now we've got lots to cover. I'm going to be talking about the design, overall design of the headset because there are different designs out there. I've tried most of them. I'll be talking about the build quality, obviously value for money, sound quality, obviously that's key. You want a great audio experience. But more importantly, I'm going to be talking about comfort because for me that is key to any gaming headset. I've learned that <laughs> over the years. I'll be doing a mic test as well so you can hear the quality of the microphone. Now also I'm going to be giving some comparisons. So I'll be comparing this headset to other headsets that I've owned and used. And also at the end I'll be talking about some general sort of advice for choosing a headset that's right for you. So that would be like open these closed back headsets and also wired with wireless patch <laughs> patch leave my my water alone yeah i do it we've got a lot to get through so i do advise that you get yourself a drink and just sit back okay so first off let's have a look at this headset and it comes in this nice little velvet pouch um, it does attract dust and stuff but it's a nice quality little pouch so let's open this up Okay, so inside we have the headset or the head the headphones. So it doesn't really become a headset until you attach the mic. Yes, the mic is detachable. Now first off, I'm going to be talking about comfort. For me, that's key to any headset. It doesn't matter how good the sound is. It doesn't matter how good the audio quality is. If they're not comfortable, after a couple of days, you're going to get fed up with them. So I can't wear these anymore. And you're going to be sending them back and scouring the internet before you know it, looking for another headset. I've been there. I've done that many times. It isn't easy to find a gaming headset that's right for you. And I think a big reason for that is everyone's different. Like everyone's head size is different. Head shape is different. Some people's ears stick out more than others. Some of us are less tolerant to say clamping pressure on the sides of our heads. Me personally, I am, as you can see, I am follically challenged. I don't have any hair up there. So I do normally need quite a lot of cushioning on the headband. Otherwise, after a while, I start feeling the weight of the headphones on my head. A good analogy is buying a pair of shoes. You can spend a lot of money on a quality pair of shoes. And if they hurt you, you're not going to want to wear them and you're going to take them back. It's the same with the headset. Now, fortunately, I can tell you that these are actually the most comfortable headset I've ever owned. And I've owned quite a lot of headsets. And a key factor in that is the weight. They only weigh 280 grams. And that's including the microphone and the cable as well. And you might think to yourself, well, wait a minute, I don't want a really light headset. I'm paying for these. You know, I want something solidly built. It's going to last me a long time. But trust me, I have found over the years that weight is the enemy of comfort. So if you think about it, when you're wearing your headphones, I've got to adjust them. <laughs> they do adjust. Actually, they, they, they click quite nicely, actually, and they stay in place as well. A lot of headphones, they don't really click securely, but these do. And they've got a nice, like, nice tactile click to them. And it's easy to get each side the same adjustment as well. But when you put them on, the clamping pressure is just right. With a heavy headset, you have to have more clamping pressure to make them feel secure on your head. But because these are so light, you don't need a lot of clamping pressure. And even though I've got a big head, they still give me a nice, just enough clamping pressure that I don't feel like they're gonna slip around and fall off, but no more than's needed. Because if you have more than clamping pressure than your, oh, hello, Pesh. <laughs> if you, have more clamping pressure than is needed, after a while that can actually start to hurt you. Now we've got to the headband, even though I'm follically challenged, there isn't a lot of padding on the headband, but still I can wear these for hours and hours, I have worn them for hours and hours gaming night after night with my mates, and it's never given me any problem on top of my head, any sort of pain. Now I had a full review of the Sony Platinum headset, and that's got like a rubber band for the headband, and that really hurt my head. Literally after like half an hour, I could feel it hurting my head. And I kept on moving, moving it like that. Um, but it's just not nice. But with these Cooler Master headphones, super comfortable. And also the ear pockets are nice and deep. I did a review of the Kingston HyperX Alpha headset 
I put a link to that at the end of this review. And that was a good headset, and it's actually in direct competition with the Cooler Masters. It's a similar design with a removable microphone. Now, a problem I had with the HyperX Alphas was the pockets for the ears. It's actually quite shallow, it's only two centimeters. And also the drivers, the actual speakers in the headphones, they are kind of like parallel to, to your head, like that, but it's only like two centimeters deep pockets, so they would push on your, actually push against my ears. And they had metal drivers with just a thin bit of material over them. And after a while that would actually really, actually hurt my ears. And when I took them off, I was like, oh, relief. And yeah, that's never a good sign. But with the Cooler Masters, the drivers are actually angled. So rather than being parallel to your head, they're angled to your ears. So they're actually deeper at the back and shallower at the front. So when you put them on, my ears don't even touch the drivers at all, which makes them, for me, super, super comfortable. And even if your ears stick out more than mine, there is actually a little foam piece of material between the drivers and your ears. And a lot of headsets neglect that, and I actually think that's actually really important, because that little bit of foam actually makes a big difference if your ears actually touch the drivers. But these are really generous in depth. At the back, you actually get three centimeters of depth, the deepest ear pockets in any headset I've ever owned. Now, there is an issue with closed back headsets. This is a closed back. I will be, as I said, I will be talking about closed the open back a bit later on. But all closed back headsets do have a problem because they keep the air trapped in the ear pockets. They do make your ears warm. Now, with the HyperX Alphas, my ears actually got really warm. A friend of mine had the same headset. It, like me, his ears got sweaty, and you actually had to add some tissue paper. Um, in the summertime, when your ears get sweaty, you'd actually pull off the ear cup and actually mop around your ears with some tissue paper because they really did heat your ears up. With these, obviously they're closed back, and all closed backs do have that problem to a certain degree, but with the Cooler Masters, it wasn't so bad. They do heat your ears up, but it's not as bad as a lot of other headsets out there, or closed back headsets. So I'm actually gonna give Cooler Master 10 out of 10 for comfort. These are the most comfortable headset I've ever owned. Now if you compare that with my Sennheisers, these are a much more expensive headset. And these are my favorite headset. I, I do like, really, really like these, but they're not perfect. Um, I have a full review of these on my website. Uh, definitely check that out. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. Now these are open back as opposed to these being closed back, but they have a boom mic that, which flips up and flips down and mutes, and they have a volume control on the ear cup. Um, so it's a really, it's a really nice design. But a problem with these is when I put them on, there's actually quite a lot of clamping pressure. These were a light headphone, and there's really more clamping pressure than is required. Um, like, it's nice that they feel snug, but I do notice that after like a few hours of gaming, you kind of do feel that clamping pressure. Whereas with the Cooler Masters, I never do. I never feel the clamping pressure. I, they're just super, super comfortable. Okay, so it's great that these are comfortable. Big tick in my book, big, big tick. But of course, the audio quality has got to be good. You want a good audio experience. And I can tell you that the audio quality on this headset is excellent. I, I paid £55 for this headset online. I looked online uh, today and I think it was about £60, it gone up a little bit. But still, that's an amazing value. You've got this super comfortable headset and with excellent sound quality. Now, there's a decent amount of bass. It does extend, which is great for like explosions and that if you're playing the games and you want explosions like in Call of Duty, you know, feel immersed in the explosions. They do have a nice bit of oomph to them. They also have great treble as well. So you've got nice, clearly defined treble, which is again, great for gaming. So they have a bit of a V-shaped curve to them. Now they have four centimeter drivers, which show neodymium magnets. And neodymium magnets, you really do want that in a headset or headphones because they can make the magnets more powerful and therefore they can use lighter magnets, which means the drivers can be more responsive and give you better accurate reproduction of sound. Okay, so can you listen to music with this headset? This is a question a lot of people ask if they want a sort of multi-function headset. Now obviously because the mic is removable on this headset, 
you can just use them as a normal pair of headphones just for listening to music. And I can tell you that the audio quality is perfectly good for listening to music. In fact, this headset is actually based on a set of headphones by a company called Tagstar. They're a Chinese company. This is basically the Tagstar Pro 82 headphone with a microphone attached to it. And you might be asking, well, how comes? How comes Cooler Master are using uh, headphones by another manufacturer? Well, that's actually quite interesting. And now that's a good time to address what I think is the elephant in the room, and that is Cooler Master. Really? Don't they make fans for PCs and power supply units? I've actually got a Cooler Master power supply unit in my PC. They're not known for making headphones or headsets. I mean, what do Cooler Master know about making headsets and headphones? Well, not a lot really. <laughs> but what they did, and it's quite clever, and this is what Kingston did as well. Now, Kingston, you might know them for making RAM in computers, like random access memory. I've actually got Kingston RAM in my PC. And Kingston also do sort of memory sticks. I've bought a lot of Kingston memory sticks over the years. And they decided to get into the headset market. So what they did is they went to China, they spoke to Tackstar, interestingly, and they said to them, like, well, this is, this is, I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but this is what I believe happened. They went to Tackstar and said, look, we want to make a headset. You've got great experience making headphones. And they based the HyperX Kingston series of headsets on the Tackstar Pro 80 headset. Now here's a picture of the Pro 80 headset to have a look at. And if you compare that with a picture of the Kingston HyperX headphones, you'll see the similarity. So what Kingston did is they took a microphone and they basically put it on the Tackstar headphones and said, job done. And they've been really successful with the HyperX headsets. So then what happened was Cooler Master thought, wait a minute, we can do that. <laughs> so they went to Tackstar but they base their headset on the, as I say, the Pro 82. And here's a picture of the Pro 82. And as you can see, very similar to this. It was basically identical. <laughs> I think they just made the ear cups a bit deeper just so they could fit on the microphone. Now, Tackstar make very affordable, but very well-made and well-respected headphones. They are kind of, I suppose they are kind of clones of more successful Western headphones, but that is doing them a bit of a disservice because they do actually make very good quality headphones like the Pro 80 and the Pro 82, get very good reviews. So it's a really smart move for Kingston and Cooler Master to do that, to base their headsets on an existing headphone that's been well established and well respected. Because this is based on the Pro 82, I think Cooler Master have kind of one up Kingston a bit. So for 55 or 60 pound, you're getting really good audio quality. Now I'm going to compare these with my, these are my Biodynamics DT770. So these are also a close back, but these are not a gaming headset. These are just ordinary headphones, but they are very well respected. They've been around a long time. Professionals actually use these for studio work, for mixing and mastering audio tracks. So if you listen to these and then you listen to these, you might think these are going to sound totally inferior to these. Right? These are twice the price of these. <laughs> but these actually hold up very well when you compare them to the 770s. Obviously the 770s are better. And it's a bit of an unfair comparison anyway, because these are a 250 ohm headphone, whereas these are only 26 ohm. So these actually have the potential to give you much more controlled frequency response and give you much more well-defined audio. And they do. Like if you drive them properly, they do. You can plug them into, so I'll take off the, got an adapter here. You can plug these 250 ohm headphones into a controller. This is my PlayStation controller, like that. And you can, and you can gain. Because they're 250 ohm, you don't get a lot of volume out of them. Uh, it's, in, it's enough for my needs, maybe not for a lot, a lot of people, but, but these are harder to drive. Like if you plug these, because they're 250 ohm, if you plug them into like a tablet or a smartphone, you're not going to get a lot of volume out of them, you know. Might be okay for a lot of people. 
Before I move on, you can game with these like as a headset. If you get a, this is a Mod Mic 5, and this can turn any headset into a gaming headset. So you just stick a little magnet on the side here. This is like a magnet mount, and then you can actually just, this is a magnet as well. You can just click that on there, and you've got a gaming headset. And I actually do use this for gaming, and it works really well. I have a full review of the Mod Mic 5, so definitely check that out. Because if you want the very best audio quality, then yeah, that in my opinion, that's the way to go, is to use a really high quality standard headphones and put a mic on. But then of course you've got all the leads to deal with. You've got a lead from the mic and a lead from the, the headphone. It can be a bit of a kerfuffle. And with a high ohm, home impedance headphones you then really would want a little amp to drive them and get the best out of them uh, which I have I have a review for a, a headphone amp as well on my site okay but we've got to audio quality as I say very comparable like these are better but these hold up surprisingly well and they have a sort of similar signature to the 770s but these 770s are brighter and that can be a negative for some people because some people do find these too bright, like the high end too sharp. The bass extension is phenomenal. It's fantastic. Obviously, <laughs> these don't extend as much as these, but they do extend quite well. Like for a headset for £55 with a microphone and everything you need for gaming in one like neat sort of package. I mean, it's really cool to be able to stick a microphone on your headset like that and then you need one lead now the lead here's the lead okay oh, getting a bit tangled up here <laughs> okay here's the lead too many things too many things right move that out of the way okay here's the here's the lead or the lead and it is really nice quality actually it's got little gold plated contacts and it's like woven shielded so it can be a bit noisy like if you have certain clothes it can be a bit noisy, but it's a nice thick quality lead. It doesn't get tangled up that easily. And you can actually just plug it in here to your headphones. So this it's been detachable. That's a really nice feature. In fact, a lot of headphones and headsets don't have detachable leads. That's one thing I don't like about my 770s. This lead is not detachable. But this gaming headset, it is, and it kind of locks in place. Oh, it does lock in place. You just have to twist it to lock it. But what I found is when I was using this headset for any length of time, the lead would, if you don't lock it in, it will kind of start coming out. And if it comes out a little bit, then the mic stops working. Because <laughs> I had that several times, like the mic will stop working and I realized the lead had just come out a bit. So actually locking it in place is actually a good idea. Okay, so, would you go out and about wearing these? Um, I think I probably would. Like if you take the mic off, you could, it's nice functionality. Like with a headset like this, this is like designed purely for gaming. With this mic, it's not detachable, and it's got the volume control. I mean, people can see this is a gaming headset straight away. But if you take the mic off these, it's pretty much just go, you can go out wearing these if you want you to. You can sit on the bus or the train wearing these, no problem. And because they're closed back, you won't disturb anybody. They won't leak audio. So I think these are like compromise design. They're not 100% made just for gaming, because I think for gaming, this is the best design. A mic that just flips down and mutes. It's so easy. If you're going to sneeze, you can just go like that, sneeze, not disturbing anybody. If you want to take a drink, then boom mics get in the way, so you just flip it up like that. Have a drink and a carry on gaming, raiding, whatever you're doing. And of course, having the volume on the side is really good. And that's one thing about the design of this headset that I don't particularly like. It has the inline, on the lead, you have the volume control. It's just a rotary volume control. And you have the mute switch. Now the mute switch, unfortunately, is I think the weakest part of this headset. It's well made, but this is a bit fiddly and it's not very good quality. Like the mute switch works, it's functional, but when you're gaming, someone just wants to talk to you or you want to talk to someone and you're in the middle of a game, you quickly want to mute it, you're kind of fumbling around looking for this little switch 
and you can you can you can do it without looking at it, but it's just fiddly. This is the Mod Mic 5 again. Manufacturers take note. This is the way to do a mute switch. It's a nice big switch, and that's really what you want. So that's the only negative. But other than that, it's actually built really, really well. Kind of screwed in here. You've got a nice sort of rubbery finish to the actual yokes here. You've got some nice little metal detailing. You've got really soft, plush leverette cushioning for the ear cups. This is a light leverette material. Not a huge amount of sponge, but enough for anyone that's going to keep you comfortable. Even the actual ear cups themselves are kind of rough finish. So there's no shiny parts that are going to get all covered in fingerprints. And I think that's really smart on Cooler Master's part. Now they're built, they're built really well. I think it's going to last a long time. The box itself, it's really nice. For, for the money, you're getting a really good, actually nice quality package. And I'll open this up because you do get a selection of leads. Okay, so let's open this up. Okay, and here's actually, here's a quick look at the specifications for the headset. So you can have a look at that while I'm getting the box out. Okay. okay, so I've got the sleeve off. And inside you get this box. And it opens up. Take that off. There we go. Take that off. And you've got your instructions. And a bit of foam. And we have in here another little lead here. So inside just nice little foam housing. And another box with the other leads and that come in. Okay. So yeah, packaging really, really nice. Okay, so you get this other lead here. Now this is for connecting to a PC. Basically you take normally you'd have your headset and you just plug that into Normally you just plug this into your controller of choice. It's a multi-system headset, so you can just as long as it's got a 3.5 millimeter jack socket on there, and this is uh, you've got a microphone and stereo audio. As long as there's a little port like that on your controller, you can plug it in and just and use it. You can even use these for talking on a mobile phone. Like if you plug this into a mobile phone, you can use this. <laughs> as a headset for my phone, that's what my girlfriend does. Um, and she's used these and these are, she's found them really comfortable. Okay, but if you've got a PC and you've just got a stereo input, where's the, where have I done the lead? Oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> okay, so if you've got a PC and you've got a separate mic and stereo port on the back of your motherboard, then you can just plug this in and then this connects to your lead, like that. And it's a it's a good size, good size lead. Well, that's a good size lead. In fact, I think if anything, I'd say that the lead's a bit long. It's a bit long for when you're just gaming on a controller. When you've got your headset on. There's quite a lot of lead, it kind of dangles quite far down. If it was a little bit shorter, I'd actually think it might be better. And if this was a bit, maybe a bit longer, and this was a, a bit shorter. <laughs> and also, I think that the little mute and volume control is a bit far down. It kind of sits in your lap, if it's a bit higher up. But then, well actually I think it's probably okay. Because you can just obviously you can pick it up, but I just find it a bit fiddly trying to grab where you know where are you looking down? Where is it <laughs> when you might want to be concentrating on gaming? But yeah, it's it's a good quality lead. Okay, so now for the actual mic quality. So what I'm going to do is plug this microphone into using this adapter. I'm not sure I do need to use the adapter. Oh, so I do need to use the adapter, don't I? Yeah. That's the stereo head headphone. That's the green connector. And the red connector is for the mic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this 
into the camera so you can hear what the mic sounds like. Okay, so now you're listening to the Cooler Master microphone. Now, this is a really, I think, a very good quality microphone for the price. It's, it's actually as good as some more expensive headsets, in my opinion. Obviously, you can hear for yourself. It doesn't have a foam windshield over the microphone, so vocal plosives could be a problem. Now, you can move it quite easily, move it around, and it stays, it's good quality, it stays exactly where you put it. You can put it closer to your mouth if people are having trouble hearing you. Now, I'll do a vocal plosive test. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And a sibilance test. She sells she's <laughs> she sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, so yeah, it's a really good little microphone. Now, if you want to serve a cup of tea, you can obviously move the microphone away, have a drink, move it back again. It's not as convenient as a flip up boom microphone but you know it's okay and what's nice about it is because it's so flexible you can easily move it closer or further away from your mouth so if vocal plosives were a problem or people said to you you're a bit loud on the microphone it's very easy just to move it further away or if you're a bit quiet on the microphone move it a bit closer to your mouth actually about an inch from your mouth is probably optimum for most microphones okay so for comparison's sake I'm going to give you a little sound test for the Sennheiser microphone. Now, Sennheiser make amazing microphones. This is the best gaming headset microphone I've ever come across. It does suffer from vocal plosives. Through the magic of video editing, I now give you a little test for this. Okay, so here's the Sennheiser. The lead's a bit short, <laughs> which, again, I think is probably better for plugging into a controller because the lead is a bit shorter. But... Yeah, if you're going to plug it into a PC, you do again, you do get a splitter with this as well for using with a PC, and that splitter leads a bit longer, which I think is a better sort of ratio. Um, as I say, it does suffer from vocal plosives. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, but you can actually bend the mic a bit, but it's not as flexible as the Cooler Master. This, this is so cool being able to flex it wherever you want so easily. This flexes a bit, but it really doesn't flex a lot. As I say, I do have a full review of this headset, so you can check it out. But I thought you might want to hear what this microphone, the sort of cheaper, this is an expensive headset, so this is a, like a cheaper microphone. But I think it actually compares very well to this. The Cooler Master microphone is clear. There's no crackle or hiss or anything. And that's what's important, really. Unless you're streaming or making YouTube videos, then this is actually perfectly ad adequate for gaming. Okay, now I did promise to talk about a little bit about closed v open back headsets. And this also applies to headphones, like just normal music headphones as well. If you look at the very best headphones out there in the world, like really top, top expensive headphones, they're all open back. And that is because open back headphones and headsets actually give you better sound reproduction. The Sennheisers here, these ones are open back. There is a close back version of this headset, but basically there's little holes or grill, there's a grill there, and that lets air and sound in and out. So when you're wearing open back headphones or headsets, the sound can get out, which could potentially annoy people, you know, if they're reading or whatever and you're, you're gaming, but it's not really going to be an issue, I think, in most situations. But they do let sound in as well so the environmental sounds around you or the acoustics around you kind of affect the audio and if someone's like watching tv up loud then that could affect your gaming experience whereas with the closed back headphones like these that don't have a, any holes or grills you're more sort of isolated and cut off from the environmental noise now with open back headphones on, and headsets the sound is more open which is great for so open world games where in your big open world and it feels more natural. It's, these are open back headsets and headphones give you a more natural sound. And also with closed back headsets and headphones, because the audio can't escape and the air can't escape, the drivers don't respond as accurately. And so the sound reproduction isn't quite as good as open designs. So if you don't need noise isolation, 
then I think open back is the way to go. But what you find is the vast majority of headsets are closed back. And I don't know why that is. If there's someone from like Cooler Master or Kingston or any headset manufacturer ever happens to, or someone ever happens to watch this video, please. I think there's a big gap in the market for more affordable open back headsets. If this was, a, if there's an open back version of this headset, I would have bought it, but there isn't. <laughs> now a big advantage for me for open back is because the air can get out, Obviously heat can get out, out, out as well. So it keeps your ears cooler, much cooler. And that is a big deal for me because, in, especially in the summertime, your ears getting sweaty and hot, it's just not comfortable. You can kind of block it out when you're gaming. But I think for me, open back's the way to go if you, if you can, if there's an option. Now some people say with closed back, you get better, deeper bass. I don't believe that's the case. I have some biodynamic DT990s and they are open back, they're the, the open back version of these, the 770s, and I have a full review of the DT990s as well. They're amazing headphones and, and they're fantastic for gaming. But yeah, they give just as good a bass as the 770s. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I've reviewed the Hyper X Alphas by Kingston and they were a good headset, but I would, out of the two, the, the, these are similar price range, same sort of design, but out of the two, I would choose the Cooler Masters. Now, these are the, the ones I'd go for. Okay, now I also promised to talk about Wired V Wireless headsets. Now, I have used wireless and obviously wired headsets. Now, a wired headset like this, it's just an analog headset. There's no digital circuitry in here. Whereas with a wireless headset, they have like digital circuitry actually in the headset. And of course, because there's digital circuitry in their wireless, they also need batteries, lithium ion batteries. Now, one thing to bear in mind is lithium ion batteries degrade over time. So as the months go by, you will have to charge them up more and more regularly. And also they won't last as long per charge. And I found that after say a year, or two, the lithium ion batteries would need replacing. And in most wireless headsets, you can't do that. Some more expensive ones, you can replace them. But for the vast majority of headsets, once the batteries start uh, degrading, you have to have them plugged in all the time anyway. And what I found was the batteries would always run out at the worst possible time, like in the middle of a raid or something like that, the batteries would run out. And also, having the circuitry and the lithium ion batteries adds to the weight of the headset. And as I said before, weight is the enemy of comfort. But there is one negative with regard to wired or analog headsets that are closed back. And that is, you can't hear yourself. When you put the headset on, you can't really hear yourself talk. You can hear yourself talk, but obviously because these give you noise isolation, you tend to raise your voice. You think you're talking a lot quieter than you actually are. So you raise your voice, which can annoy people. People around you might go, what are you talking so loud on that gaming mic for? And people in chat might, be, might say, you're a bit loud on mic, you know. Uh, obviously you can turn down the mic sensitivity or pull the mic away from your mouth to compensate for it. Uh, but yeah, it's just something to be aware of. It's not a huge issue, but yeah, I tend to try and keep my voice down lower, sort of mentally I'm sort of conscious of the fact that I don't need to shout. Talk quietly and people will hear you, no problem. Now, with an open back head analog headset, you don't get that problem because being open back, you hear yourself perfectly well and you don't tend to raise your voice at all. Now, with digital headsets, one of the advantages is with, because it has circuitry in it, it has something called side tone. Well, they don't all have side tone. But most of them do have, most USB wireless headsets do have side tone. And what they do is they take the audio from the microphone and actually play it into your ear cup so you can hear yourself perfectly well and monitor your voice level. Okay, so one thing I'd like to say is nobody sent me these. I had to, unfortunately, <laughs> I had to pay for these with my own money and now for my own personal use. And unlike a lot of reviewers out there that spend most of their time doing reviews, just reviewing product after product, they might use these for 20 minutes and then go, I'll do a review. 
I have used these for gaming, as I say, I game with my friends online most evenings, hours at a time. So I definitely can tell you that these are up to the job. In fact, you even get a two year warranty with these. So Cooler Master are obviously confident that they've built a high quality headset that's gonna last people a long time. And also a nice feature of this headset, being a more modern design, is that the ear cups do swivel. So you can, if you extend them, you can put them around your neck and they do kind of swivel like that. So I have a large neck, but they still are quite comfortable like that. But you can actually put them down flat on the, like, like you put them flat like that if you want to. But that does mean that when you put them on, they do swivel or overextended. See, I've overextended them and even with a large head, they're much bigger than you need. So these will fit literally anybody. So yeah, they do swivel to just match the size of your head. So it doesn't matter about your head shape, they will still swivel to match it. And because this foam is really nice and soft, this is really soft foam, they do actually give a nice seal around your ears. And one thing to consider with this headset is the ear pads are not replaceable. They are glued on. Maybe someone will figure out how to replace them at some point. But once they wear out, then pretty much the headset is done. But it should take like, at least a few years before that happens of like using them a lot. Whereas with the 770s, for instance, these ear pads are replaceable. You can actually take them off and wash them. I've actually bought a new pair online and replaced them at some point, and they cost me about £20. So yeah, uh, that is something to consider not having a replaceable ear pad. Uh, even the headband on here is replaceable. You have these poppers, you can replace the headband as well. So yes, these are very affordable, but they will wear out, the pads will wear out, uh, but then they do have a two year warranty. So hopefully they will last you at least two years. But then, you know, for the money, like 60 pound, that's, if you get two years use out of them, then that's really good. So yeah, that's something to consider. Okay, also I should mention, there is an alternate version of this headset. This is the MH751, but there is also the MH752. It's basically the same headset, but it doesn't have this little volume and mute switch on the actual cable. It has a dongle instead, a USB dongle, that you actually plug this headset into you still get a cable with a 3.5 millimeter jack on the end. It's still basically the same headset, an analog headset, but you can plug it into this little dongle. It's a USB dongle DAC. So it allows you to connect any, basically any headset with a 3.5 jack into this little dongle. It's actually supposed to give you 7.1 surround sound as well. Here's a picture of it. Now this little dongle has the volume and mute switch on. That's why you don't need this little doobie on this cable inline controller. So instead of connecting to a PC via these two connectors, these 3.5 millimeter connectors, you can connect to it via USB. It's only about 15 pound more. Now I haven't got the dongle to test, so I can't really say whether or not the 7.1 surround sound is any good or not. Apparently it does make the headset sound a bit more spatial. But, you know, like £15 for a little digital DAC, that's not a bad deal. But of course, one thing to consider is if you do want to plug the headphones directly into a controller for gaming, then you definitely do really want a mute switch and volume switch on the cable. So that's just one thing to consider. If you're going to game with the NH752s, you really do have to use the dongle. Now, unfortunately, I don't have it to test, um, but obviously it will work with PCs. Whether or not the dongle will actually work plugged into game consoles is another question. I did have a look online, but I didn't really find a sort of definitive answer to that. Uh, maybe if someone has got the 5.2s with the dongle and they have used them with an Xbox or a PlayStation, uh, that would be really cool if I could leave a comment for other people with regard to that, whether or not it will work. But I played safe 
and just went for this version because I didn't really need the dongle anyway. So yeah, but again, it's another option for you. Okay, so finally, <laughs> we're at the end of the review. Yeah, I think these are excellent. I recommend these to anybody. I think for the price, they are an absolute bargain, an absolute steal. You can spend like a hundred pounds more and not get something better than this. These are fantastic value. I think Cooler Master really have done an amazing job. They've kind of taken the leaf out of Kingston's book, but they've actually, in my opinion, done a better job. And yeah, so I thoroughly recommend these. Like these are a fantastic headset. If they did an open back version, that would be brilliant. Please, Cooler Master. <laughs> open. If they did an open back version, I'm even thinking of drilling holes in it in here. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But yeah, these still are great for the money. Okay, so I hope this review has been informative and it's helped you decide whether or not this headset's for you or not. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.